So you're excited to hunt deer and elk in Idaho, but where do you go? This is the third and final video in a series of digital scouting tutorials that will take you from A to Z in discovering new areas and creating a plan for success on your next Idaho hunt. In tutorial one, we learned about how to use the Idaho Seasons and Rules booklet, Harvest Statistics, and Hunt Planner to choose a season to hunt, view publicly accessible lands, and find road and trail access in your unit. In the second tutorial, we covered how to find specific areas to hunt within a unit by learning about deer and elk habitat and how to identify that habitat using topographic and satellite imagery maps, as well as Google Earth for scouting and route planning. In this tutorial, let's apply that knowledge and head into the field for a boots on the ground scouting trip with a goal of confirming the presence of game animals for your hunt. A couple of things before we get started. First, you may not have time to scout an area on foot before you go hunting, and that's okay. Any good hunter is constantly scouting, and the more time you spend in an area, the more you learn, continuously increasing your chances of success. Second, anytime you head into the woods, expect you will not have cell phone service in case of an emergency. Make sure you always let someone know where you are going and when you plan to be back. It's always a good idea to carry a first aid kit, bear spray if in grizzly country, and fill your gas tank at the last station you pass, even if you don't think you'll need it. Lastly, make sure you have enough food and water for longer than you plan to be gone, and ensure that you are prepared for a sudden change of weather. Staying warm and dry can literally save your life. A waterproof jacket or plastic rain poncho are a minimum, but a small tarp for shelter, extra layers, and fire starting materials are always a good idea in the backcountry. All right, scouting is all about observation and efficiency, and attention to detail is the secret to success. So let's talk about what we are looking for. Now, ideally, we hope to see animals. Your best bet for seeing animals is the first and last few hours of daylight. And this is when deer and elk are most often up, moving around and feeding and visible for you to see them. Closely watch key areas that we identified in tutorial two, like transitional areas, tree lines, saddles, and ridge tops. When seeking out animals during the day, you will want to focus on bedding areas with plenty of cover. From spring through summer, deer and elk follow the green up of food to higher elevations. And then as fall approaches, so does the mating season. Elk begin breeding activities called the rut in September and deer typically later in October. So if you have a buck or bull specific tag and you're only seeing cows and does on your scouting trips, keep in mind that mature males often join the rest of the herd as fall hunting seasons approach. Significant amounts of snowfall will also push animals down from the high country before they eventually migrate to their low elevation wintering grounds. There are many forms of sign to look for while scouting. Let's start with game trails. From your digital scouting preparations, start by visiting any of the game trails and saddles that you've found to see if they've been used. Look for tracks and droppings on the ground. Don't hesitate to follow game trails to see where they lead. This is a good way to find water holes, wallows, feeding areas, bedding areas, or additional intersecting trails that may lead you to new areas that you'll want to take note of. Tracks. Fresh tracks are crisp, then doling over time. To tell if tracks are fresh, make a mark with your foot beside them to compare. If you see an animal, go inspect where it walked to see what the fresh tracks in that specific setting look like. Droppings. 
Fresh droppings are dark brown or green in color and shiny, often wet for the first few hours. Over time, in days, it will dry and crack, and then over weeks and months will fade to gray. The shape and appearance of elk droppings can change with diet during summer months especially. Droppings that are a day or two old will appear dry on the outside, but will remain soft if stepped on. Many times, you may not see urine, but in areas, especially where elk frequent, you will be able to smell that animal scent. And when you're downwind and in close proximity to actual elk, your nose may tell you that you are close. Rubs. Deer and elk will rub their antlers on trees to remove the velvet in late summer and to show aggression and mark with scent glands in the fall. Fresh rubs are bright in color where the bark is scraped open, revealing the wood beneath. They may also be sticky with wet pitch dripping from the tree or bush. With fresh rubs, there may be broken branches at the base, still similar in color and appearance to that of the living plant. Deer rubs are usually found on small trees, willows, or bushes two to three feet off the ground, while elk rubs commonly reach from four to seven feet off the ground and on trees much larger. Fresh rubs are key indicators that you are in an area where bucks and bulls also like to be. Grazed vegetation is another important detail to watch for. Grass, forbs, and bushes that have been browsed on by animals are clues to what the critters in that area are eating and something to be aware of as you determine and learn the areas with ideal habitat. Use your ears. Deer and elk are big animals and even though you may not see them, that doesn't mean you won't be able to hear them moving running, or vocalizing. Sometimes you'll only know that you've spooked something by the sounds of it escaping. So be listening for the rhythmic thumps of mule deer bouncing away or the thundering hoofbeats of elk making tracks. Here's a few other tips to help you with your scouting. Scent on the wind is a primary defense for deer and elk. So take note of what the wind is doing during different times of the day and weather conditions. Keep track of how long it takes you to hike. For example, knowing exactly how long it takes for you to get from your vehicle to your morning glassing location can ensure you are in position on time and also maximize your sleep. While you're driving, take time to stop and look at areas with open vistas and watch for game trails and tracks crossing the road. Stop and glass often and let your eyes do the walking. A pair of binoculars will be priceless to aid in spotting animals, especially at longer distances. Using a hiking pole or tripod as a rest to provide a steady base will also greatly improve your ability to see and save your neck and arms from getting tired, which causes shaky, much less productive viewing. Sometimes simply moving 20 or 30 yards to glass the same location will open up new angles for you to see additional hiding areas. Watch the skyline and horizon for easy to see profiles of animals. When you see big game, take note of how big it appears on the landscape and its color at that distance to start training your eyes to recognize them in harder to spot areas. Whenever you find a sign, you are creating a mental log of where to find game. Take note of the elevation, the exposure or direction it's facing, time of day, and direction of the animal's movement. Make your own hypotheses of where the animals were, where they are going, and why. Finally, scouting is a good time to test your equipment. It's great to practice to get out there and figure out what works and what doesn't, and what you may want to change for your hunt. Don't feel like you need every widget and gadget out there. Remember, humans have been successfully hunting for thousands of years, and your weapon, a sharp knife, and a good pair of boots are the most important pieces of equipment you'll need. Have fun on your next Idaho hunting adventure. Be safe, 
respectful of others, and the natural resources that make Idaho the outdoor enthusiast's paradise. And good luck. <laughs>